Hey everyone, welcome to That Pedal Show, Dan here. Mick here, hello and welcome to All Pedals, uh, All Overdrive Pedals do sound the same after all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what I thought we'd do today, there's a bunch of pedals that, I don't know what we're going to call this, it might be um, Pedals You Should Know or Unstrung Heroes. Um, but there's a, there's a bunch of things that we don't use a lot that are worth having a play with. This is really bothering me, Dan. What's bothering you, Mick? I don't know, all our positions are wrong. Anyway, that'll have to do. Uh, indeed, and before all of that, uh, please go to that pedal show store, buy merch. It's the predominant way we fund this show. Uh, it's, we... it, it's new, it's pretty. Yep, yeah, nice new uh, grey tee with Play Loud on it there. We have uh, things like uh, water bottles. <laughs> Very nice cups to Very impress nice cups. your friends with. Look, this pedal show on this side, incognito on that side. Nice. Mm. Functions perfectly as a beverage deliverer as well. So, uh, yeah, please go to that pedal show store yeah. and subscribe and subscribe. Yeah, lovely. Sales pitch over then. Sorry, mate, you were saying I'm, I'm all bothered by production stuff today. Um, overdrive pedals. Yeah, so there's... I just think there's a there's a we might do a series of these because there's a bunch of pedals that we don't use very often that are fantastic and I just think the world should know about them. Yeah, we've chosen three each. Um, Dan, briefly run us through your three. So I've chosen the Purple Plexi uh, from Love Pedal, the Tone Pump EQ from Barber Electronics. Are you absolutely sure that's what it's called? Yes. Because we, we kept getting it wrong, didn't we? <laughs> it's the Tone Pump EQ. Great. Yep. And it's and then the Dual Overdrive SC2 from Boss. Nice. I've chosen the uh, J Rocket Audio HRM, which we'll come on to in a sec. Uh, the Maxon Analog Man modded OD9 with Bad Bob Boost. Very good. And the ZVEX 59 sound. So um, shall we just do one each? Yeah. And see how we get on? Indeed. Indeed. Uh, okay. We'll start with the Purple Plexi. So... I first heard this oh, far out. It's got to be 10 plus years ago. And I was really impressed by it then. And then I heard it on Josh Smith's board. And it's like, it just blew me away. Now, as a general rule, I don't... There's what we call the amp in a box type things that I don't generally go in for. This is obviously modeled after a, a plexi type thing but for me it's a it's just a really fantastic high gain sounding flavor yeah, of a marshal for those yeah for those of you not not aware um plexi usually refers to the kind of 67 68 69 70 uh, non master volume amps that you would associate with people like Jimi hendrix Jimmy Page, Richie Blackmore to an extent, but that that sort of late sixties, early seventies, non-master volume Marshall called Plexi because it had a plexiglass uh, control panel. Does purple have anything to do with Jimmy? Do we know? Um, as in as in his Hayes days? Yeah, uh, possibly. Yeah, it sounds gainier than that to me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on then. Yeah. Okay. The amps we're using today: uh, Matchless HC30 with matching cab, and the Basement 70, Mick, quickly tell us about this. Uh, it was a second-hand bargain we picked up in Salisbury. Uh, it's a 1979 Fender Basement 70, obviously a bass amp, but Fender Basements have been used as guitar amps forever. What I'm doing, it's got no reverb, right, which is, there's another story to this amp in a minute, which I'll get to when we get to the, uh, the Maxon, but um, the guitar is going, to, well, the pedal board is going into input one of the bass input. It's coming out of there, going into that surfy bear reverb that's up on the top there, coming back out the surfy bear and into channel two. Slightly convoluted because the two channels are out of phase, so we've had to flip all the surfy bears out of phase, I'm not sure which. So we've had to flip the phase to get them in phase. So basically we've got wet dry in one amp. Uh, the second channel is doing the reverb. Why not just run it in line? Well, why would be my question. <laughs> why not make it as complicated as it can possibly yes. be? Anyway, yes. together they sound like this. <laughs> Mm. 
The matchless is giving up a tiny bit more than the basement, but not much. And we've deliberately put plenty of headroom or allowed the amps to have plenty of headroom so we can really, really hear the overdrive pedals. Indeed. Okay, purple plexi. <laughs> Fabulous sounding thing. It's there's nothing tricky to it. It's just every time I've heard it plugged in, I've gone, oh yeah, that's a really lovely throaty sounding. Just the right amount of fizz in there. It's really Obviously, nice. If we plug every flipping guitar in the world in today, we're never going to get through them all. But I just do feel it would be appropriate. Um, it would be appropriate. Just a quick tune. Um, Disappointing. No feedback. Uh, couldn't tell you why I was, I was getting feedback. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, literally none. That's pretty weird. Uh, yeah, okay. Sounds pretty martially. It does. It's, a re it's just great. Re really great. Um, all right, then. Uh, where shall I go first? I'll go to the, I guess, the HR. No, let's go to the Maxon because that tells a story. Okay. Get the strap for this. There we were, Daniel and I, in Connecticut, in Bethel, Connecticut, with Mike Piera, who is Analog Man. 
We went to visit him a few years ago, mm-hmm. long before the dreaded COVID, to do some fuzz stuff. And we stayed at Mike's place and every, I can't remember what night of the week it is. Madison Square Basement. Yeah, Mike invites his buddies around to Madison Square Basement and they jam and they play. And we jammed and we played. And on the night we jammed and played, I played this exact pedal into an amp not a million miles yeah. different from this. It was actually a basement 50, a bit earlier. Right. Um, What's that one? Basement 70. 70. And the 50, I think, I can't remember if it was a silver panel one or if it was a, a black panel one, but it was just a killer sounding thing, no reverb, super simple. Mm. And from that day on, I had oh, yeah. something like this in mind. Yeah. Anyway, so it is uh, Mike's modded SD9. If you want to know the history of the, uh, sorry, OD9, if you want to know the history of Maxon and Tube Screamers, it's very interesting. They originated the design, blah, blah, blah. So Maxon, very, very important in the world of Tube Screamers, not least that Mr. Maxon, I forget his actual name, but he basically invented it. Max. Yeah. On off, Max on. Max on. Max, Max off. off. Um, and uh, so it, it begins its life as an OD9, which is Maxon's version of the... Uh, TS9 Tube Screamer. It then gets Mike's um, mod. It's not the silver mod. If you look on uh, his pages, it's not the silver mod. It's just the standard mod. And then because of the way this this particular circuit is laid out, he can then also fit in a version of his bad bulb boost. So what you'll see is the big switch in the center there, uh, the big sort of rectangular one. That one. Yeah. Is the OD9 switch. And the uh, more normal looking switch above it is for the bad bob. And the bad bob comes after the OD9. All by which lengthy introduction brings us to the pedal. Okay. Uh, Here's, uh, I'll just start without it a sec. Typical strap thickener, and I don't know if it's Mike's mods or something to do with this particular version of it, but it doesn't, the way that those mids peak and the way the top normally goes away on a standard TS9, this is, doesn't have quite so much of that. Right. Retains a nice bit of top end. Sounds good. It's not, it's nowhere near as loud as it normally is, so I'm not quite sure what's going on, but I don't know. Um, and then, if we turn that off and turn the bad bob on. So you hear all that snap come back into the the strap, which is kind of not there without it. Mm. And I've said this so many times on the show, but one of the things I like the boost for, and any boost for that matter, is on a strap where you, uh, without it on, 
If you turn the volume down, it goes very dark, right? And it goes it very rounds it off. dull and rounded yeah. off straight away. But if you just bring the the bad bob in, all right, it's a bit louder, but the, the top comes back. And that just means if you don't hit the guitar quite so hard, you can lean in and get some lovely clean sounds without having to work quite so hard. And then of course you can use them together. So if we start with the with that one. Just that extension, two stages. Do you know where the bad bob is in relation? Is it after or before? Pretty sure it's after. Because it lifts it, it. It just lifts it and and it keeps all that uh, spank. It's just, it sounds killer. It's nice. Hear it in the sound. That's amazing. It's such a good, it's a good machine. So there we were in uh, back to the top of the story and we finished the night's jamming and I said to Mike, how can I get one of these? He said, yeah, sure. I said, no, actually, can I get this one? And uh, <laughs> bless him, he, he gave it to me. But um, yeah, so it, 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 a special place yeah. in my heart that. And I think, you know, the two in one nature of it in a very small package, complete with Mike's um, know-how with mods and stuff, you know, lower noise floor, just, a brilliant thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to put the bad bob back on the board. I think after that, <laughs> just that that boost nature of it. That's something else. Yeah. Um, okay, number two for me. So this is uh, from Barber Electronics. Um, many of you will know David Barber. As far as I know, David was the first uh, pedal builder to commercially. Um, build a compressor with a mix knob in it. Yeah. Um, as a guitar pedal. As mean. a guitar pedal. Yeah, yeah. With a you know with a with a dry dry blend. Mm. And his stuff is. I mean, we, we really haven't had enough of David's stuff on the show because he's as a, as a builder is like a really important part of the history of of you know this whole pedal thing. And the Barber Drive. Um, has you know been around for a long time and he's got a, a bunch of different flavors. Now one pedal that he did release many years ago that he stopped making was a is a pedal called the Tone Press EQ. But he does make them to order. So we had a, an experience day last year and 
I uh, forget the gentleman's name, but he, he said, oh, Dan, you've got to hear this. And he brings out this old tone press EQ and, you know, plugged it in. And it just sounded amazing. And I emailed David straight away when I got home and said, I've got to order because I know you don't make these anymore, but can you make me one? So I can do a custom one for you. The idea behind this, um, how do I put it? If the closest thing I can liken it to is a really, really awesome sounding ODR1. Okay. Very open. The nobles. Yeah, very, very touch sensitive. Um, you know, big, big gain range. There's a couple of uh, bass options and mid range options with the switch up, up, up the top. Um, but this is how I set it. And I just think it's the most wonderful, you know, sounding thing. Uh, very uh, dynamic off the volume pod as well. That nice it's really nice it, it strikes me as it's definitely got a, a mid hump yeah without doubt but not in the way that a ts has it a cheap screamer or or a clon for that matter it's a different place so it's a thickener and in that sense it it, it is <laughs> i'm trying to get away from saying it sounds really natural but that's exactly the word I was going to say. Yeah. That's exactly, it does. It it's just almost sounds... like when you crank a deluxe reverb. Yeah. It's almost like that kind of very natural, the, the mids in it feel like they're happening as the amp is getting cranked, not because you've boosted them, at, yeah. you know, whatever. But uh, yeah, have a play with the humbuckers, but just notice the way it just reacts to the pick. It's just amazing. turning the game Sorry. down. I keep Sorry. turning the guitar down. <laughs> Yeah, 
Isn't that great? Like you say, it keeps the edge on the note, which yeah. is really nice. Through the range of the volume pot on the guitar as well. Yeah, yeah. It's really great. He's such a great designer. Um, I, know I haven't played anything of his that hasn't been outstanding, but as soon as I played that thing, I'm like, right, straight away, got in touch with him and ordered one. Ton of volume too. Ton of volume. Yeah, I And like I think, that. yeah, as, as does the Purple Plexi, yeah. a ton of volume. And that's it's an interesting thing that so, something about overdrive pedals that you and I both like having a ton of that on, you know, on tap. Yeah, so that you can, if the gain isn't too high and you just want to run it slightly, uh, I, you know, I wouldn't say clean, but... But boostier. Boostier. Yeah. You've got plenty, plenty, plenty there. That works in two ways. One, into a higher headroom amp, gives you massive solo boost when you need it, and you need it. Um, but also into a lower headroom amp, that um, huge amount of volume can really start to drive yeah. to drive the. Front yeah, down. without having too much gain in the in the pedal itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, next one for me, J Rocket HRM. I I think I love all of J Rocket's overdrive pedals. Yeah. Um, Chris Van Tassel and Jay, Jay Rocket, would you believe there is a Jay Rocket, um, d d are plugged into a world of such fantastic players yeah. and the, no slouch players themselves. Uh, and it, it comes through in, in the tone of their pedals, mm. for sure. The HRM, it looks different now. I think they've just redesigned it. Um, but it was... It's based on... There was a mod d done to a, d a Dumble called the Hot Rubber Monkey mod, I think or a Dumble that ended up being called that. I forget which it is, but it, it moves on from the Dude Overdrive. So the Dude Overdrive is supposed to sound like a Dumble Overdrive special. Right. The HRM is a mod of that. Okay. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they've just updated the cosmetics. Anyway, the first time I heard it, I was like, yeah. A, because I love the Dumble Overdrive special kind of vibe. Mm. And B, because uh, on whenever I use a pedal board with a bunch of drives on it, I'll normally have something boosty drivey like a TS, like the aforementioned Maxon, mm -hmm. or I don't know, it could could be any other thing, a Klon, whatever, or a Klon style. Um, and I'll always have an extra pedal that is solely for higher gain, low volume rhythm playing. Right. This often ends up doing that job. Right. Because it's such a fat sound that you can tailor the top and bottom end, which you'll hear, but in addition to that, it would be truly brilliant as anyone's all-rounder overdrive pedal. Right. So, um, uh, I haven't got my glasses on, but I think volume gain, treble bass, I think. Let's see. Treble fat. Yeah. So fat is kind of bottom, low, mids, as you'll hear. You hear how it's already barking in those in that mid range. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which for me is that sound. <laughs>
what I tried to do was go from lower gain, higher volume, mm -hmm. a bit more bay, well, a bit more of that fat that they call fat, the low mids, which is principal component of the Dumble overdrive sound, right. and less treble, so it gets that kind of fat mid thing. Sure. And then the reverse of that, much more present in the top end, mm -hmm. and then bring up the gain, bring up the volume. What's quite interesting about this is there's plenty of volume and plenty of gain. Yeah. Normally you find quite a lot of overdrive pedals have a sweet spot where beyond which the gain's not really... Fizz city. And then it turns into fizz city. Yeah. yeah. And there's not enough volume to really get it to right. start happening. But have a play, mate. I mean, it's it's a pretty groovy machine. I'll, put, I'll start where every, everywhere should start. <laughs> It has a negative suck factor. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? It's amazing. That um, low, the right hand bottom control, bass, low mids, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But this, uh, the guys who really know this stuff know that it's not just about the EQ, but it's about the point in which that EQ breaks up. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like having a having the EQ before the gain stage. Yeah. And so, so I'm going to pick these frequencies that when you dig in, they're going to start to limit earlier on. And and that gives it that feel. Yeah. Freaking amazing. It's nice. It's really nice, isn't it? Really nice. Yeah. Really yeah. nice. So I think, I, I don't know, you need to check on the J-Rocket website. I think all that's changed in the new version is the, the look of it. Um, it's got a much cleaner look, I think, if I'm, if I'm remembering that correctly. Very, very nice. Groovy. Very nice. Okay, well, the last one for me today... This is the Dual Overdrive ST2 from Boss. Now, Boss started making these in Taiwan, and they didn't make them for very long. Um, at the very least, they don't make them anymore. And this was the inspiration, or at least part of the inspiration, behind the collaboration that Josh did with Boss. Oh, yeah, okay, the Angry Driver. The Angry Driver. Did you buy this in Japan? No? Uh... When we were there? I think, yes, I did. Mm. I got this in Japan. They, they're not, you know, they are around. They're, they're not crazy expensive, but there's a feature in this that I, I love. It has two completely separate overdrive circuits. Right. Right. I mean, 
I don't know for sure, but I think part of the reason that it didn't do very well is it was a little bit confusing. Because essentially you needed... You needed an external foot switch. You could... you There's, there's a mode knob that you can just go between the two different sides. Okay. But then you couldn't turn it off. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. wanted to be able to turn it off, you had to have an external switch. Yeah. Um, so basically, if you ha have a look, there's the little green LED up here, right? Yeah. And that means that we're in the crunch mode. Okay. okay. Is that the top knobs or the bottom ones? Uh, the crunch knob is, is the top knobs. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the center one, the center knobs. The yeah. center knobs, yeah. exactly. So. God, I need my glasses. If, if we hear the, the crunch by itself, so this. I really like that. It's got plenty of clarity, but my favorite thing about this pedal, I've got it hooked up to a remote switch in here. So when I press this button, you'll see the, the LED go red. See where it says remote there? That's on a, is it a TRS jack? I, I've i used just a normal quarter inch jack. Yep, so that connects to this here, and then that is going into to G3, which is hooked up to this switch. Exactly. Yeah. So now I can go from this, bottom end yeah and yeah pretty scoopy in the mid yeah which you can't no it's just a tone. Much about in no. the tone. it says here right in this bottom mode it says crunch lead yeah so so if it, i put it in the bottom mode yeah oh is that where you can switch it on here, the pedal you can switch it on the pedal oh you can't stack them you can't stack them no oh, right no okay can i say i don't love the way it sounds you can. Do you I do. Yeah, I still think it sounds. I think it sounds. I, I, I like the the lead side, but I am going to mod it. Actually, you know what? It would function in, in exactly the mode I was just saying about as your gainier rhythm sound. 
sure. because it is a bit scoopy in the mids, it would sit out the way of vocals. Yeah. So if you wanted to just a gainy sound to chug away with chords on and just sit out the way, whereas anything I've chosen so far. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, the, all the, all the, the HRM is fine if you turn it down far enough, but once you start getting up, those vocal mids start taking over everything. Sure. And cutting. Yeah. And I think like there's something in that that. Yeah, it's not the mid boosty thing, no. but there's something in the attack, especially with the the lead channel. So I am going to have a play with it and yeah. mod it because it's two completely different circuits. Oh, is it? So okay. you know, I'm going to have a look at some some diodes and you know some EQ options and and uh, you know maybe look at uh, some some top end stuff. But I fundamentally. You love I'm it so re- much, I- you're going to change it. No, no well, the, the, I really like the, the lead channel, and I'll probably leave that as it is, but I want to have a play with the crunch channel. Okay. But I love that you, you've you got the two circuits in there. I just yeah. think it's a really cool thing. Yeah, and it, I guess it's pretty old, is it? Yeah. It's not, I mean, it's not ancient, it's not 70s. It's, um, we think it's 80s rather than yeah, 90s? Yeah, 80s, I, I would say, or, you know. Maybe nineties. Maybe nineties, actually. Yeah. Maybe nineties. Yeah, I, I, I want to say nineties. It does remind me of of all the yellow overdrives I had when I was in my late teens. Sorry, okay, actually mid teens. Right. Um, various. I, I might have even had one of those. Okay. Because I bought all of them that came out. Right. There was a turbo overdrive as well. Which yeah, yeah. That, that was more orange. And I got that because it said turbo on it. Yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> Did you have the um, the feedbacker? No. Okay. Only only ones that were actually. Well, maybe I didn't have the turbo overdrive because all of mine were yellow. Maybe well, the turbo overdrive. Uh, no, no. I think the turbo overdrive is is yellow. Okay. The feedback is orange. Right. Anyway, yeah, cool. Um, so I'm. I think maybe because of the 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 lack of mids, um, I'm hearing quite a lot of fizz. Yeah. But I think that would be entirely good news in a band mix. Well, for certain parts, absolutely. Yeah, it yeah. really does help you get get you heard. And when I say fizz, that sounds pejorative. It's like a sizzly treble character on top of the drive, which yeah. is so good for getting you heard. Yeah, might sound not so good idea, you know, in in isolation, but actually in a band mix, different story. Totally. Okay, last one for me then. Fifty nine sound by um, Zvex. The reason I've chosen this is because a box of rock tends to get all the love. Um. And this box of rock is an amazing thing, and we love it. Yeah, I don't know if which which came first, this or the box of rock, but the fifty nine sound, I've, and I think it might be this one. So forgive me if I'm wrong. Um, Zach Zachary Vex, one of his favourite guitar sounds ever, and I think the story goes that he walked in somewhere and heard it, or I can't remember quite what was a cranked fifty nine basement, and it had a profound effect on him and made him wanna. 59 Basements had a profound effect on a lot of people. Most important guitar amp in the world ever. There you go. Um, And so in it goes into a pedal to try and help step in that direction. Like the Box of Rock, it's a two-sided affair. So as you look down from pedal cam there, the right-hand switch is the overdrive circuit and the left-hand switch is the boost circuit. Now, I don't know if the boost is like the same as the SHO or something like that. I don't, I don't, right. you, you'd have to Google that to find it out. But um, I believe they work independently and excuse us if we switch a bit, because this one's got a bit of a dicky switcher um, going on on one of the switches. We're not quite sure which. So you're going to start with, there we go. Yeah. So um, here's the old Lester straight into the amps. <laughs> Thank you. 
doing that because? Uh, because it's changing the bias. Yep, it should do that. Too much tone. <laughs> Genuinely, as a kid, when I used to sit there and play my guitar, I would dribble quite a lot. <laughs> and sometimes I'd dribble on my guitar and I started dribbling then. And that's why I started coughing because <laughs> the dribble went back in. Sorry, see, it's absolutely draw worthy. Right. What I love about that, if you've ever cranked, um, well, any tweed, really, but especially a uh, baseman, tweed baseman. 5F, 6A or whatever the, I can't remember what the designation is. Anyway, that 59 basement. The the bass flubs out in a very distinctive way. Yeah. Now these amps are set for pretty high headroom mm -hmm. and the nature of the speakers and the amps means that this bass is not flubbing out in the amps. The pedal is really helping that all happen. Right. So we cranked up the gain on the uh, on the overdrive sound there. And I, I think it is a really, really good take on that on that tweed sound. Yeah. Have a, have a go. Do you want to start there or do you want to start? I want to start there. Of course you want to start I want to start there. there. <laughs> All the top end and everything is still there. Oh. Groovy, that is a very, very lovely thing. Even with, with the gain cranked, it's just, it's not too much. Wow. Mm-hmm. 
awesome. Isn't it great? It's just awesome. Isn't it? Wow. Oh, man, this has been so much fun. Well, you know what we haven't done? <laughs> All one together. Yep. In this fine weather. Yep. All right. Come on. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe. If you, have, if you haven't already subscribed, massive thank you to our preferred retailers. All the information below. Thank you to our Patreons. And a massive thank you to anyone that's gone to theadpedalshowstore.com and grabbed some merch. Uh, thank you so much. See you on Monday. Viewers, comments, and questions.